it's an ideal time to give your bike a full overhaul and refresh before hitting the trails in the new year. So here's our top 10 tips to get your bike fresh for next year. Gear shifting on modern bikes is pretty good once you've set it up. Unless you manage to damage your rear mech or you've ingested loads of mud and muck into your cable system, it works pretty well. So it's an ideal time of year to take out your inner cable, flush out the outer housing if it's still usable, put a fresh inner cable in and dial in those gears. So at the same time as replacing your inner cable and flushing out the outer housing, it's a good idea to give your shifter a little bit of TLC. Now we kind of take them for granted because they're well sealed and they generally work quite well, but you have to take them apart to pull out the inner cable, so it's a good idea to flush it all out and put some fresh grease inside. I like to use a really thin spray grease because it doesn't congeal inside, keeps it all working smoothly. Due to the nature of mountain biking, bolts do tend to rattle loose time to time. So with a bit of thread locker, it's worth paying attention to all those obvious bolts. If you've got multiple chain rings, check all of the chain ring bolts and it is worth undoing them and putting some fresh thread locker on. Also, take a look at stuff like your jockey wheel bolts because they do rattle loose and you'll never really notice that until one of them fires off down the trail. And of course, if your bike has got bolt on dropouts, they normally got tiny little Allen keys, like three mil bolts. They can come loose as well and you'll never notice it. So get those tightened, check your brake calipers, your disc rotor bolts generally check the whole lot. Unless you took the time to protect your mountain bike with some clear protective film in the first place, it is going to suffer some battle scars over the duration of a year. So just for example here, you can see I've got a pretty nasty chip from a scuff I had in Spain recently. So I've got a couple of options here to sort this out. So the first option is just simply to put a bit of heli tape over it so it doesn't get any worse. The second option is to do a bit of a patch job on it. And a good way to do this is to get a color match paint sample from your local car shop. If you get the samples, it don't really cost a lot of money. And you can just gently sand this down, fill it in with a bit of that, sand that down again, and get some clear nail varnish or a bit of clear lacquer, paint that over the top and just file it smooth. It won't be a perfect finish, but at a glance, your bike's gonna look nice and sound. Of course, I'm not that fussed about it, but I don't want this to get any worse or to flake off. So I'm actually going to do the same thing, but without the colour. I'm just going to put some nail varnish over the top of this and just file it down so it's just a nice smooth finish. Another thing you really need to pay attention to are your suspension forks. Now, they do work really well in a variety of conditions, but as soon as they start drying out or ingesting all that mud and muck you ride through, they're going to start playing up. So firstly, make sure they're really clean around your seals. Secondly, if you're able to, do a lower leg service on them. That simply is pulling off your lower legs, cleaning them, putting some fresh lubricant in and reinstalling them. We've got a video on that and it's in the link below this video. The other thing you can do if you're less confident is just remove the garter seal, slide this up and using the end of a cable tie, just slide it under the seal and apply some lower leg lube here. You can also use silicon spray. So this stuff is really slippery and this will just go slightly underneath those seals put the garter spring back in place, give it a wipe, and cycle the fork a few times, and you'll find it feels a lot better. <laughs> so it's also worth inspecting your tires when you're looking at your bike. What you're looking for is any missing knobbles, or more importantly, slashes in the sidewall or throughout the tire tread. And take time to look to see if there's any thorns in there, get rid of those, same with any bits of metal or anything embedded into the tire. If you run your tyres tubeless, a good idea is to top up your tyre sealant. Now this doesn't mean getting messy and having to take your tyres off the bike. If you've got valve cores, for example, like these ones that you can remove from the bike, then you can put the sealant directly straight into those if you get a syringe. Much neater way of doing things, it does mean you can top your tyres up from time to time without having to reseat them. At the same time as inspecting both your front and rear tyres for damage, you want to be doing the same for your wheels. What you're looking for is any damage to the sidewalls or the rim, make sure there's no splits or anything. If they are slightly dented or dinged, you can straighten those. Um, and obviously you want to pay attention to any loose spokes. Anything loose, you want to make sure you nip it up tight with the spoke key, 
Don't go too tight because you're gonna make a bit of a mess of your wheel, just enough so they don't fall to bits. So in working my way around the wheel, just like looking for dents and things and stuff, I have actually found quite a severe dent here. But what I have noticed is the rest of the wheel isn't out of true so much and it's not affected the sealing of the tire. So what I'm gonna do is just take note of the fact where the dent actually is. So in this case, it's by the, by the sea of the Continental. Uh, it only happens this once on the way around. So I'm just gonna monitor that over the next couple of weeks riding to see if that worsens. If it does, then I'll be taking my tire off and I'll straighten that. Even if your bike is running smooth, it's well worth checking it over for old and contaminated grease. Remember that even though cartridge bearings are sealed, a thin coating of grease will help keep the water off them, helping them last longer. Make sure you work your way around the bike and check your BB, hubs and headset. It's also well worth applying some fresh compound to areas like the seat post and handlebar stem if you use it. It's also well worth adding a tiny bit of grease to your wheel axles to help them slide in smoothly. You only need a tiny amount though or grit will stick to the axle. Finally, your transmission. It's obviously vital to how well your bike works. It's not going to work well if it's dirty, filthy and worn out. So to start with, you want to degrease it all, clean it and lubricate it so it's just like new, cycle the gears through, and then you just want to inspect it and make sure nothing's overly worn, your sprockets aren't missing any sort of teeth, and the same with your chainring up front. And then you want to check the chain itself. Now, this does vary according to whether it's a 10 or 11 speed chain or a 12 speed chain. With 10 and 11 speed chains, when it reaches 0.75 on a chain checker, that's when you should be replacing it. With a 12 speed chain, you're looking for 0.5, and that refers to how much the chain is stretched. If you replace your chain before it's stretched, you're gonna get more use out of the same cassette and the same chainry. Don't need to be an expert to work out that's gonna save you money in the long term, so it's well worth investing in a chain checker and just monitoring your use. So there you go, top 10 tips to get your bike fresh for a new year hitting the trails. Hopefully they've been useful for you. If you want to find out a bit about how to use a lockout on your suspension, front and rear, click just down here. And if you want to find out about that lower leg service I talked about earlier, click over here. Of course, as always, click on the globe in the middle to subscribe. Brand new videos coming to you every single day. And if this video has been useful for you, give us a thumbs up.